Right, so today I'm going to show you how to set up Laravel with Docker. We're going to have a complete Docker environment that's going to contain a database, Redis, the worker, and also the Laravel app that we will use to serve our application. Now, before we start, we have to go to the official documentation. I'm currently using version 11, and we're going to run this if you're on Mac OS, if you're on linux or vsl you should install you should run these lines essentially what this does it installs php and composer and the laravel installer you also have to have docker so you should just follow through and install those things after you've done that we can go to our next step and that step is going to your terminal and we're gonna go to our project directory mine is in dev youtube and inside of here it's an empty directory we're gonna create a directory for our project and i'm gonna say make dear and let's say laravel best that's the name of our project. And we're going to CD into it. Then we can open this up in Visual Studio Code. Okay, now that we have this opened, we're going to create a couple of files here that we need. And the first thing that we want to do is create a docker compose.yaml file. This is our main file that we're going to be using. And this file is going to contain all the services that we actually need. We're going to have services. Let's start with the basics of what we need. We will need a database. And I'm going to be using Postgres because that's the database that I prefer. You can use MySQL or MariaDB or anything else that you want. So we're going to create a DB service. And this is essentially a DB service that has this image. It's Postgres. It's 16.3.0 version. It works on this port. It will always restart. And there is a volume that we're going to need to set up and this volume is where the data will be stored also we will need these environment variables and we will create an env for it later and it's going to work on the internal docker network so let's create the volumes we're going to say volumes and it's going to be named db data and that's this db data corresponds to this right here so after this we're also going to be needing redis because we're going to be working with caches and queues and so on we're going to paste this in and this is just a redis service that has an image of redis 7.2 it's open on the default port 76379 it will always restart and also we have the redis data volume so what we can do here is we're going to say redis data and now we have these two services set up after we have set up these two services we will also need the docker internal network and this just means that there is is an internal network that's going to be accessed between these services and containers which allows us to not expose them to the outside network after we have done these two things we will also have to have an env file and we'll also have to have a laravel project let's create an env file for our services and this is essentially what will be the the password for the redis and the postgres container and the username and so on so let's create an env.example and first we will add these values here in the env example and then we will copy it to the env because we do not want to push the dot env file to our git repository because that is not a good practice to have so we're going to say redis password and it can be whatever you want here because we are just we are just setting this up password and i'm going to set up the username and the database okay now we can just copy and paste this and let's say dot env also we're gonna add a git ignore dot git ignore and we're gonna add env here because we don't want the env to be pushed when we run the containers for our postgres and for our redis these will be the actual variables we will use to connect now that is done let's get to the part you all waited for in order for us to work with laravel we need to create the project so we're gonna go back to our terminal and inside of here we're gonna say laravel new and we're gonna name this app and let's name it what's the name of our directory it's laravel best so we're gonna name it the same way so we're gonna say laravel best we don't want any starter kits we'll use best it's not important no we're not we're not gonna initialize a git repository and it's gonna be creating a project now it will ask us for the database that we're gonna be using and we're gonna be using postgres here database it asks us for migrations here i think we're gonna say no and now we have a laravel app setup so if we run ls we have the laravel best here so let's get back to our visual studio here let's go into the laravel best directory and as you can see everything is set up now there's one thing that we need to add and that's a docker file here and this docker file is the most important part here so we should go to the laravel best directory so not in the root but in laravel best and let's create a docker file we're going to say docker file and inside of here we have to use an image and we're going to be using php fpm 
11. So we're going to say from BHP 8.3.11 FPM. I think this is one of the latest images at the time I'm recording. After this, you should update your image and check if there's anything new. But after that, we're going to be running the following commands. And this is just essentially to install what's needed. Now, after this, we have to run, we have to install the actual PHP extensions. And you should, you, if you're using a different database, it's not Postgres. If you're using MySQL or something else, you should change this PDO PG SQL. It's actually a driver for, for Postgres. So if it, if you're using MySQL or anything, any other database, you're going to have to install the correct driver that you want to use. After that, we will install Composer and then we will copy everything from our current directory, which is this Laravel best where the Docker file lives inside the slash var slash w slash html and this is where the application files will actually be after that we want to set the ownership of this user and this is a standard user for web servers because we're going to be running caddy here and then we're going to switch to that actual user so we're going to switch to user data and we're going to expose the port and run our php fpm and this should be the entire docker file what we essentially do is we get FPM, PHP FPM, we install the dependencies, we install the PHP extensions that we need, we install Composer, we copy all the files, we then run chown to actually have the permissions to access the var www.html, and then we just expose it on the port and switch to the user. Now that this is done, we're going to go back to our Docker Compose file again, and inside of this Docker Compose file, we actually have to, to run the Docker file that will containerize the app and make it work. So we're going to say app which is going to be our service, Laravel service. And inside we'll place a build and then a context. And the context is actually this directory here. So we're going to say dot slash Laravel best and make sure to spell this correctly. And we're going to specify the Docker file, which is going to be just the Docker file. So this means look for the Docker file in this directory. This is the Docker file and it will run this file. Now, after that, I like to set up, for example, restart policy. So we're going to say restart. It's going to be unless stopped. And then we're going to add a Docker network and expose this on ports. So we're going to expose this on port 9000 because we have it. We have the port 9000 here and expose this on port 9000. We're going to make it on internal Docker network and it's going to depend on the database. So once the database is up, then we can start the app and one more thing that we need to, to add here is the queue worker for when you want decide to use jobs. So we're going to say queue worker and we're going to have the same build here because it's actually the same app. You're going to have the, the worker washing the database for tasks. And then so we're going to have the same thing, the same Docker file. We're going to have a restart policy and we're going to add the same network and the database. Make sure you format this correctly add the Docker network, add the database, and then you should run the command. So you remember when you want to run a worker, you're going to say artisan queue work, right? So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to add a command here and it's going to say PHP artisan queue work. So now we have an app that's going to run this Docker file and be exposed. We have a queue worker, we have a database when we have Redis. The last thing that we want to do here, and this is why this approach is so good because we can make it scalable. We can add caddy here or we can add caddy as a reverse proxy outside of this Docker compose file, which means if you have several instances of this app, you can load balance it. But that's a different topic. So for now, we'll just add caddy inside of here. So to add caddy, so we're going to say caddy latest. This is the image that we want. We're going to expose ports 80 and ports 443. This is HTTP and this is for HTTPS. You have to have 443 exposed if you want to have the HTTPS enabled. So we're going to go also to volumes and we have to access our app. So we're going to say Laravel best and we're going to add this to var HTML. And we also need a caddy file, but get to the caddy file once we add the network and we add that this depends on the app. So when the app runs, the actual web server can also run. So we need a caddy file for this. So we're going to create a new file called caddy file. And inside of this caddy file, I already have a configuration and we're just going to copy and paste this. There's one thing that you want to know for production. This is not good for production. This right here, when you set it this up on a VPS, you're going to have 
yourdomain.com or .net or .org or whatever you have. So it's not going to be on port 80 because obviously this will not work. You want to have your domain here so that Caddy can automatically set up HTTPS and so on. So we're going to have this Caddy file. After that, we have to tell Caddy here to use that Caddy file that we have locally. So we're just going to say below this volume that the Caddy file right here will be mapped inside the Caddy container. Here. Now that we have everything set up, we come to the exciting part where we have to run this. And let's first check our environment variables. So this ENV, and let's go to Laravel Best. We have these two ENVs. We have to set up the correct environment variables. So let's go to our DB connection and we have to change this. So it's going to be a Postgres database, a Postgres username. It's not going to be root. We're going to set up the password and we're going to set up a Redis password. So Redis is going to be at the bottom here. Yeah, let's run this with this host. You can see the local host here. We can run with this host and let's see what's going to be happening. So I'm going to go back to my terminal here. Let's run Docker Compose up build. And you should also add detach so that you're not stuck with that terminal you can exit out and the containers won't be closed so we can say docker compose up build detach and let's let it build all right now that the containers have built we can go to our browser here and check out if the app is working and let's go to localhost and run this and there's a failure we're saying that we cannot connect to the server and this is because we're using this port this host and we're not going to be using this actual the, the host 1.27 it's because we have our internal docker network which is db and redis so let's get back to the editor here and inside of here we can see inside the docker compose file we see that we have docker network for uh, the app and instead of using the local host, we're going to be using DB and Redis. So inside our DB host, we're going to say DB. And inside our Redis host, we're going to say Redis. And this makes it isolated and way better and safer. So let's go back to our terminal and let's rebuild the containers. All right, now that the containers are rebuilt, let's go back to our browser and let's reload this again. So if I reload this again, it says undefined table. So we have connected to the database, but we don't have these tables. So that means we have to run our migration. And how do we run our migrations? It's fairly simple because everything is now dockerized. We have access inside our Docker container. So what we will do, we can go back to our terminal and we can run Docker Compose. We're going to say our app service name and we're going to say bash. So go into the app service and execute bash, which means we will have a bash here inside the container. This is the Laravel app. And as you can see, there's all these files. And in order for us to actually make this work, we're just going to have to say PHP artisan migrate. And as you can see, the, migra the migrations run. And now when we get back to our browser and reload, there you go. We have a fully functional Laravel app. So this is Docker version of it. This is very useful, but we don't have automatic code changes. And most people would bind, use bind volumes. They would go to the editor here and inside the Docker compose file, they would just bind this app and this queue worker to the, La the Laravel best to the, to the files here. And they would just add a volume and then use a bind volume. But we're not going to be doing that because there are some security considerations there and we should not be doing it that way. That's why when you are in development, developer mode, you can just go PHP uh, artisan serve. Actually, you have to get in your go, go to your Laravel app and then you're going to say PHP artisan serve and you're going to have everything running on your uh, local host on port 8000. So now we can go to our local host port 8000 and you have the Laravel app, as you can see. And now once you change something, so let's go into our resources, views, welcome. And inside of here, so we're going to say H1 development. And let's close the tag. And we're going to save. And if we reload, there you go. You have development. So you have automatic code changes. And then when you want to test something out into production on your VPS, uh, when you want to host something, then you should close, you should make the changes that you want to. So I'm going to make this change. I suspend the process accidentally. And let's go back to our terminal. And then we can uh, exit out of the container and run Docker Compose up, build detach, which will again rebuild everything. And then when you go back to your app, once this rebuilds, so now that this has been rebuilt, we can go back to our browser and let's go to our local host again. And there you go. You have the changes. So that's how you switch between development and production. And now you have a great way 
dockerize everything and deploy everything without you know paying a dime and you have the exact freedom that you want where you can go to your docker compose file and add anything you want so for example some people like using horizon for jobs and queues you can go to to your docker compose file and add the horizon service here which is going to be the, which is going to have the same files it's going to be this docker file and you can just go from there and set up your application so this is how to run laravel in a docker environment without headaches and misconfigurations that's it i hope you learned something bye